So while I was in the military, I was doing PT one day. Boring! I mean, continue, please. This is a fun story. <laughs> it's, embar so. it's embarrassing for me. I have to do sit-ups, so I sit down on the ground, I start doing sit-ups, and I start feeling this itching on my thighs and on my, my ball sack. <laughs> Oh my god, that's a lot of pain. That's way too much pain. That should not be that much pain. And I look down and realize, I've been sitting on top of a fire ant hill. And the fire ants are transferring icy hot to your genital area, which the is fire ants bit me, I think, like 30 times on my balls. <laughs> yeah. How? Okay. How did they get through your trousers and undergarments? Well, I wasn't wearing undergarments. I was just wearing my PT shorts. Oh, that makes sense. So they climbed up my butt crack and went <laughs> onto my balls and bit me a bunch of times on my butt, on my thighs, and on my balls. And that was a lot of pain. <laughs> and I basically didn't do anything for two days. <laughs> I laid in bed and went, oh, this hurts so fast. Why? Why? Maybe next time you'll learn to look. Yeah, your maybe butt next time I'll make sure that I look before I start doing sit-ups somewhere. Maybe next time you'll learn to look before you sit on an anthill. Moral of the story: Don't sit next to a fire ant hill and let him just chew on your it's not gentleman's a, region. It, it's not a moral; it's just practical advice. I would assume that if you were a lady and they bit you on your lady bits, that probably wouldn't be any more pleasurable. I wouldn't know. My boss has been trying to sell the work van. For several months now. Mm -hmm. He got a new work van, but he didn't know what to do with the old one. He said he was going to try and sell it, but it had 300,000 miles on it. Oh, goodness. He said if he couldn't find a buyer before winter... Oh, God. Oh, boy. We got some uh, people here need to die first. He said if he couldn't sell it before winter, mm -hmm. then he was going to send it to a scrapyard. Sell it to a scrapyard for the pittance that he would receive. What do you think happened in between then and now? You bought the van. No, I did not buy the work van. Oh, well you could. You I, could buy the work van and then live out of it. I could, but it's a disgusting old van that's probably going to fall apart in a couple of weeks. He sold it. He did not sell it for money. What did he sell it for? <laughs> you want, I'll give you three guesses. A gun. Nope. Beer. Nope. Pot. <laughs> I'll give you three more guesses. I'll give you 300 more guesses because you'll never get. It's a pig. He sold the van what? for a pig. What? He, Who sells a van for a pig? He bought a piglet that's like 100 pounds. Oh, uh, okay. I got, I'm listening to a story about a pig. <laughs> he sold the van for a pig. He bought a pig because he's going to feed it until it's 300 pounds, and then he's going to slaughter it for the meat. <laughs> Can you tell we live in the rural part of our state? <laughs> I w That's astonishing to me on I infinite levels. <laughs> really quick fun story. Anytime I got rounds that were bent or something, I would just pull the bullet out of them and dump the gunpowder into a bucket. Wait, wait, wait. You got rounds that were bent? If you had a misfeed and the round got jammed partially in the chamber and the bolt closed on it, it oh. would bend up the round and then you can't use it. Is that um, frequent? Well, especially with military guns that are handled by a bunch of idiots that don't know how to put stuff together properly. Fair enough. So I would just dump the gunpowder into a bucket, and eventually I had a five-gallon bucket that was completely filled with gunpowder. So I had all this gunpowder laying around, and I was like, I don't know what to do with it. I'm going to build a little tiny cannon. Uh, you're going to build a tiny cannon out of all of this gunpowder that's lying around? Well, I was going to use the gunpowder for a tiny cannon. It seems like a fire hazard to leave that around. Isn't that stuff combustible? Well, I would seal it in the bucket. I would put the lid on the bucket. So safe. There is no OSHA in Iraq. <laughs> they don't care. So the first generation of the cannon was like a little metal pipe that I plugged up the back of it and drilled a little tiny hole in it. And I stuck a metal bobber and I would ignite it with a torch and it would go... <clears throat> do nothing. It, it went like two inches. So I built another one, but the ball bearing wasn't exactly the right size and it just launched the cap out of the back of it. And I was like, okay, well that was dumb. <laughs> so we gotta use more gunpowder! Eventually, I had built a, what I thought was a really good cannon. I threaded the end of the piece of pipe, I put a little cap on it, and then I put a little tiny square of fabric behind the ball bearing, and I jammed the ball bearing down there, and I put it in a vise. <laughs> so elaborate! And I lit it. The ball bearing shot out at such velocity that it went straight through the roof of our motor pool. <laughs> and I don't know what happened to it, because I had built a muzzle loader. <laughs> It basically built a 30 caliber muzzle loader. So you had a tiny hole in your ceiling? Not that anybody noticed because it was really high up and also the ceiling already had a bunch of holes in it. But yes, I built a 30 caliber muzzle loader and I'm really glad that nobody was standing anywhere near the front of it and it didn't ricochet off something and hit somebody in the head because I could have accidentally killed somebody with this stupid little thing that I thought would be funny to build. 
Idle hands are the idiot's play thing. Yeah, so the moral of the story is don't try to build small cannons in your <laughs> in your motor pool. It's a really bad idea. You'll probably end up killing somebody. You're the reason they put warning labels in the back of these things. You proud of that? Did you take it home with you or did someone take it from you? Uh, no, the moment it went poof! Because it was loud. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I don't think it was breaking the sound barrier, but it was loud. I couldn't hear out of one of my ears, and the moment it fired, I went... I'm going to get in so much fucking trouble. I took the pipe out of the vice that I had it in, cut it up with a plasma torch, and threw it into the scrap bin. So did anyone come by asking about that? I'm assuming that somebody else probably heard it go off. I just went, oh, fucking Zach. <laughs> it reminds me that I was working at the back of the warehouse, the medical warehouse, where all yeah. the unsupervised kids were doing data entry. And we found some dry ice. <laughs> <laughs> First time, oh yes, kids are so excited about it. And we put them all in a two-liter bottle, and we dumped some water in there, and nothing happened. Oh, that's disappointing. So we kicked the bottle into the ditch behind the place, and uh-huh. went back to work. And about an hour later, it went off. <laughs> it sounded like a gunshot, only even louder than that. Yes. Yeah, it's, it, it sounded like a bomb going off, because you made a bomb! It did not go unnoticed. DNA test, brushing teeth, chocolate chip DNA. This was the message you sent me recently. Did you impregnate a chocolate bar? My mom got me one of those like DNA ancestry test thingies. Oh. That tells you what your ancestry is. So you're one fourth chocolate bar. I got it home and it's like, take this thing and spit into it. That's not the first time your mother has said spit into this thing. <laughs> My mom didn't say that. I said that on the box. So you had to spit in a vial, and then what? Well, I was going to spit in it, and I was like, I just ate a brookie. It, is that a chocolate brand? It's a, it's a chocolate chip cookie brownie. Okay. It's a, it's a brownie with a chocolate chip cookie. I get the general it. idea. Anyway, so I had just eaten a brookie. So I was like, oh, I don't want to spit in it right now, because then I'll get a bunch of chocolate chip DNA in it. So I probably should brush my teeth first. Okay. That's it. That's the whole story. And now you continue the story. (laughs) Because when you tell a story, there's got to be something at the end of the story. There has to be an end! Yeah, so basically, I was was like, well, I don't want to just spit into this thing, because I don't want it to... No, 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 no! You don't repeat the end of the half story. You give me the other half of the story. I don't want to get the results back, and it says, yeah, you are one half chocolate chip cookie. So I was like, oh, I probably should brush my teeth first. So what were the results? I don't know. I haven't gotten it back yet. It takes like two months. Maybe you're half idiot and the other half is also idiot. I think it's, I think it's probably one of those like 99% idiot, 1% Native American jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get your results back for your DNA test? Are you ready to be super surprised at my DNA results? You are 100% white and 2% Caucasian. I am 47% England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe, and 36% Germanic Europe, and then 13% Norway and 4% Sweden. So you're all Scandinavian. So kinda. I am entirely 100% white. Oh, you're a pure <laughs> blood, are we? <laughs> if you looked up Caucasian white in the dictionary, <laughs> it's pretty much what I am. And people said that Master Race would be something like you, but looking at you, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, if, if I am the example of what the Master Race is supposed to be, then I you got you, you can do better, but you can definitely do worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you ever see the shoe bills in California? I did. I did see the shoe bills in California. They did the beak chattering. They were like, cop, 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 cop. Was it everything you'd ever wish for? It was. It was amazing. I love shoe bills. They're the best. <laughs> was, it, was it worth going all the way down to California to see them? Yeah, but we did other stuff in California. Like what? We went all over the place. We went and saw a bunch of different animals. I saw an okapi. We went to the zoo. We went down to a beach and saw a bunch of seals and sea lions. And I almost stepped on one because I thought it was a rock. <laughs> are, they, are they difficult to distinguish? When they're laying on the beach and everything smells like beach, then yes. <laughs> As yes. long as you had fun, that's all that matters. I did. I had a lot of fun. It was a very enjoyable experience. All right. Shall we get back to killing things in the big mountain? Let's go. The whole DNA test thing was a little odd because my sister got her DNA test done. and um, <laughs> I can imagine that being awkward if you find out she's 50% some other ethnicity. Entirely Scandinavian. Which is what yours are, is, isn't it? No, mine is English and German. That's pretty much it. Mine is English and German with a little teeny tiny bit of Norwegian in there. So, two possible occurrences here. Either they're scamming you, 
or something's been going on. Well, my sister and I have different dads, so oh, yeah. She's your half sister. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yes. My <laughs> Okay. 